The movie opens up with policemen arresting a man for murder, while the man's son begs the police not to take away his father. But the police have to do their job, so they take the boy's father in. The boy is left crying in the rain, saying, I am the son of a murderer. Years later, we meet Detective Shoy, who is being awarded for his years of doing a great job as a detective. He is widely respected among his peers, including detective newcomer Dong Jae. He only has a few days left to secure a promotion. The head chief has advised him to keep a low profile and avoid trouble, as he will be closely observed before being considered for the promotion. While waiting for his big promotion, Shoy's subordinates throw a party for him, leaving him half drunk. The party ends and everyone leaves happy. Shoy's friends put him in a taxi to take him home since he's too drunk to drive. While in the taxi, Choi takes a nap. When he wakes up, he realizes that the taxi is not going in the right direction towards his house. He asks the taxi driver where he is taking him, as this route doesn't lead to his house. Without saying anything, the taxi driver increases the speed of the taxi. Choi starts struggling to get out and tries to stop the car. The car stops, and they both get out. Then the taxi driver attacks Choi with a knife, while also telling Choi about his past mistakes as a policeman and how he has to pay the price for all he has done today. The two men struggle for a while, but Choi manages to kill the taxi driver in self-defense. At first, he tries to call the police, but his superior calls him and informs him that they met with head office representatives who promised to promote him to a senior position. The only condition is for Choi to be careful and avoid getting into any bad situations or doing anything that will bring him any negative attention. Fearing that his career will be tarnished, he decides to cover up the crime scene and flees. The next day, a woman sees a dead body hanging from a crane in front of Choi's police station, turning the murder into a media sensation. When the police arrive at the crime scene, Choi is shocked to see that the victim is the same taxi driver he had left in a barren place earlier. Although frightened and surprised, Choi chooses not to reveal his connection to the victim and pretends not to recognize him. Dong Jae, a member of Shoei's team, thoroughly checks the taxi and discovers the tie badge. He is surprised because it is the same badge that he and his friends gave to Choi as a gift. This sparks Dong Jae's suspicion, but he decides to hide the evidence from his colleagues. The news of a dead body circulates in the media and the police station feels pressured to solve the case quickly. The chief commissioner appoints Choi, the best police officer, to handle the investigation. Choi is not happy as he thinks about how he can find the murderer, realizing that he himself killed the taxi driver. The case investigation begins with full zeal and, according to the forensic report, the skin of the killer is found under the victim's nails, indicating that they fought first before he was killed. All they need now is a suspect's DNA to determine if he's the killer. This news hits Choi like a bomb. The team is reviewing all of the CCTV footage from around the city in order to determine the last direction the victim was heading and to identify the last person he was seen with. They believe that the last person he was driving may be the one who killed him. The team is working hard on this case and is confident that they will find the killer by tomorrow. Everyone is happy, but Choi is very worried. Choi goes to the place where they were all partying and where he got his taxi ride from that night. He notices a CCTV camera outside and worries that he will be the prime suspect if the footage of him getting into the victim's taxi is found. In an attempt to protect himself, he tries to steal the footage, but Dong Jae catches him and still says nothing to the team. Shortly after, new evidence is discovered. The team finds footage of a person dragging the taxi driver's body and placing it in the taxi trunk to transport it elsewhere. In the course of the investigation, the team tracks down the murder suspect and chases after him. Choi single-handedly manages to corner the suspect and questions him about his involvement in all of this. The man reveals to Detective Choi that he is not the murderer and that he was only doing someone else's bidding. He was told to move the driver's body near the police station and hang it from a crane by someone he cannot reveal. This unknown man threatened to kill him if he didn't do as he was told. Before the team's arrival, Shoei shoots the man to save himself, hoping this will end the investigation since they have footage of this guy taking the dead body of the taxi driver to the trunk. With the man no longer alive to confess that he discovered the driver already deceased, Choi hopes to avoid further scrutiny. However, upon witnessing the dead suspect, Dong Jae becomes even more suspicious. 
At the police station, the police commissioner states that Choi killed the man without knowing whether he was the actual killer or not, and there is a possibility that Choi killed an innocent man. Choi could go to jail for this. However, Choi's team protects and supports him and argues that the use of force was necessary because the man was approaching him with a weapon. The team updates the police commissioner on their progress in the case. They have discovered drugs in the bodies of the taxi driver and the man whom Choi shot last night. Upon learning this, Choi conducts a secret investigation to uncover the person responsible for setting him up. Later, Don Jae asks his senior about Choi's recent strange behavior. His senior explains that Choi is worried because he killed a suspect and he might lose his promotion after so many years of hard work. However, Don Jae recalls finding a tie badge and decides to recover the CC footage evidence that Detective Choi stole. After reviewing the footage, Dong Jae discovers that Choi was the last passenger to board the taxi that night. With this evidence, he now has two important pieces of evidence against Chief Detective Choi. In the meantime, Choi confronts a man who deals drugs, inquiring about a specific substance found in the victim's bodies. The man initially refuses to disclose any information, prompting Choi to resort to physical force. Subsequently, the man reveals that the drug in question is quite rare and that a well-known actor had been arrested in connection with it. Choi goes to the actor's company mentioned by the drug dealer and obtains the address of his house. Choi discovers a clue in the form of a card at the actor's house. Later on, the forensic report came out of the DNA that was found on the dead taxi driver's nail and of the man Choi shot and killed. The DNA did not match, and this proves that the dead suspect did not kill the taxi driver. Choi does not give any reaction as he knows about it because he is the killer of the taxi driver. The police commissioner scolds him for killing the man who could have revealed concrete evidence in the case. Then, he tells Choi to bury the case to avoid tarnishing their reputation. Choi is surprised, but the commissioner says they will frame the dead man as the actual killer and get the forensic staff and Choi's team on board with the plan. Dong Jae later meets up with Choi and asks him, what should a junior officer do if they respect and admire their senior officer, but find out about their senior's wrongdoings? Even though he believes his senior is a good man and everything he has done has a reason behind it, what should he do? With tears in his eyes, Dong Jae implies to Choi that he knows what's going on without saying it. He then hands over the tie badge and CCTV footage evidence to Choi, expressing his belief in Choi's innocence and his faith that Choi will take the right actions to resolve the situation. Choi is surprised and happy that his junior respects and loves him and that he's about to close this case for good. Choi receives a call from the actor he's been looking for. The actor says he wants to meet him and gives him an address location. When he reaches the spot, he only finds a paper on which some dates are mentioned. He calls his fellow officer and asks him about these dates and their cases. The officer tells him that on these specific dates, three police officers were killed but the killer was never found. After calling the three victims' police officers by name, Shoei realizes that he knew all of them and they worked closely together. He then remembers something from the past and understands that this is a revenge game. We are then taken to the past, years ago, to events parallel to the beginning of the movie, involving a boy who was crying while watching his father being arrested. Many years ago, nearly 20 people were killed in an illegal casino due to cyanide poisoning. The five policemen in charge of the case were unable to solve it. Under pressure from higher-ups, the police commissioner instructed Choi and other officers to find someone to falsely accuse in order to close the case. They fabricated evidence and falsely accused a mentally disabled man named Kim, who worked at the casino, and they produced two fake witnesses, who were later revealed to be a taxi driver and the man shot by Choi. The corrupt police officers arrested a man in front of his son, and he was later sentenced to death. Now, Shoei realizes that the son of that man is the mastermind behind all this. At the police station, an actor named Jinkyu confesses to the murder of a taxi driver. He requests to speak alone with Choi and promises to provide a written and recorded confession after their conversation. In the interrogation room, Jinkyu reveals to Choi that this is revenge for his father. He also shares that the others involved have been killed, leaving only two people alive, himself and the police commissioner. Choi asks him to stop. The actor agrees and says that Choi now has to kill the police commissioner within the next 24 hours. Otherwise, 
he has footage of Choi killing the taxi driver, which he will release online for everyone to see. Choi has two options. He can kill the corrupt police commissioner or he will go to jail for his crime and get his reputation ruined. Choi comes out and the commissioner asks him about what happened in the room. Choi says there is not enough evidence to convict Jinkyu, but they have to keep him in custody for a few days. The commissioner gets angry and removes Choi from the case, making another officer the head of the case. The new officer releases the actor and Choi asks his team to catch him again. Two policemen are sent to catch him. Choi starts searching for the commissioner and finds his location. When he receives a call, the actor tells him that if he cannot kill the commissioner, then he will kill him instead. Choi arrives at the parking lot and sees the commissioner inside his car. The actor informs him that the car has a bomb. Choi runs towards the car to save him, but the car explodes. Choi, on his knees, crying, gets another call. The actor tells him that he's the only one left, as the commissioner is now dead. Since Choi was too late, the actor sends the video footage to the police station of Choi killing the taxi driver. Everyone is shocked by this, and an officer goes through Choi's laptop. He finds out about the old case in which the actor's father was held responsible for the murder of 20 people. The police officer continues to investigate and discovers shocking information about the son of the man who was arrested. Meanwhile, Choi arrives at the bar where the actor has injected himself with drugs. The actor reveals that he is not the real son of the man in question. Instead, Dong Jae is the real son, and he orchestrated the entire plan. He explains that he and Dong Jae were childhood friends, which motivated him to help. Shortly after sharing this information, the actor passes away. Choi is shocked and even more surprised to learn that the man he loves and trusts is responsible for everything. On the other hand, an officer approaches Dong Jae and reveals that he knows Dong Jae is the real son of the man who was wrongfully accused, and that Dong Jae is behind all the crimes. A struggle ensues between Dong Jae and the officer, during which Dong Jae ultimately manages to kill the officer. Dong Jae kidnaps the son of Choi and asks him to come to their location, otherwise he will kill his son. Choi reaches and points the gun at Dong Jae. The now grown-up son reveals that his father was bullied because of his mental state, and he could not bear it. So, he poisoned all those people's drinks with cyanide for what they did to his father. The police put the blame on his father and put him in jail, even when he confessed his crime to the police to save his father and begged them to let him go. They still arrested and convicted his father anyway due to corruption. Dong Jae tells Choi that now the situation is the same, or his son is in the same condition as he was. He is going to watch his father being arrested. Dong Jae then asks Choi to kill him, as he believes he has already fulfilled his wish of seeking revenge on everyone involved in his father's case. However, the police arrive and urge Choi to surrender because he has killed two people. Choi's son runs towards him, but is stopped by the police. Dong Jae remarks that this situation is similar to what happened to him and his father during his childhood. Feeling guilty, Choi decides not to kill Dong Jae and chooses to turn himself in to clear Dong Jae's father's name. However, Dong Jae ends up taking his own life nevertheless. Choi runs towards him and puts him in his lap as he cries over Dong Jae's body. In a heartfelt moment, Dong Jae's voice mourns his death expressing that the justice system and corrupt officers led to a mentally unstable man being wrongfully accused, forcing his son to seek revenge for his father. The movie comes to an end with this emotional scene. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe for more. See you in the next one.